I wanted to take a video to speak to Dark Sword Armory's Herald series. This really comes out of my own inexperience in actually handling one of these swords from the Herald line. And uh, certainly I have had both good and negative experiences with Dark Sword myself. So I just wanted to speak to my potential concerns as well as my thoughts on this concept, what they are offering in the Herald line, and give my thoughts keeping in mind the very fact that I haven't actually had a chance to hold, test, or review any of these items. So this is in many ways uh, partially supposition as well as just my general thoughts as a consumer who is looking at items on the internet. From Dark Sword Armory's website, they say, The Herald series is a subdivision of Canadian sword makers Dark Sword Armory Incorporated. The medieval weapons in the Herald series are manufactured in India under Dark Sword Armory supervision and guidelines. Each sword is individually handmade with EN45 high carbon spring steel. The philosophy leading to the creation of the Herald series is to offer sword collectors a viable source of historically accurate functional swords at an affordable price. While forged in India, the Herald series sword handles are fitted in the Dark Sword Armory shop in Montreal, Canada. Each sword is fully functional and can be used for actual combat and for cutting targets when ordered sharp. In short, the philosophy of the Herald series is to produce and supply a no-nonsense, fully functional, battle-ready medieval weapon at an affordable price. As of the making of this video, the Herald series currently has four swords that are actually in stock and available, one that is out of stock, and one that is listed as being produced uh, to be released in 2016. Obviously, this website has not been updated in a while. Now, before I get into my thoughts on this series directly, I want to speak a little bit to Dark Sword Armory and my experience with them. And this is purely my experience, and certainly uh, individuals online have very different experiences, but I think there are some commonalities throughout. The first thing I would say is that Dark Sword Armory actually does a very good job with customer service. I had a very, very specific issue, and they were willing to fix it. It is my belief that no one at Dark Sword Armory even knew who I was at the time that I was working on my review of the Dark Sword Einar Viking Sword. This is important to note because I did have that sword break on me with what I believe is actually essentially micro fractures or even potentially macro fractures that occurred in the heat treating process and the tempering. And that resulted in complete and utter failure of the sword blade while I was cutting water bottles, no less. Now that's a, that's just about as big of a failure as you can have in a sword. And I spoke at the time to how, well, swords break. It is the nature of swords. Of course, having them break on a water bottle is not a good thing. Uh, there's obviously some danger that's associated with blades flying off of swords, etc. But at the end of the day, when I reached out to them, not through my medieval review channel, but actually through my own personal accounts, they were more than willing to replace the sword, even though I had actually purchased it through Cult of Athena as a reseller and not directly from them. So it does speak a lot to what I believe to be very good customer service that they are willing to uh, hold on the warranty claims, even if they are not the primary seller. And they really want to make sure that their reputation is minimally damaged by failures in swords. That said, there have been a lot of complaints that have come out uh, via the larger sword community about Dark Sword Armory weapons. And uh, I cer it's certainly not something that is uh, unique just to me, but has been a consistent issue. So for everything that I have experienced with good customer service, there is uh, potentially very extreme problems with quality control. And that should always be considered when considering buying a weapon from them. Now, of course, after I posted that video on the Einar, and talked about how it failed. Dark Sword did find out about that video. They did actually reach out to me, uh, apologized as well. Um, and then they also uh, offered to let me have a weapon to review. And I say have, I mean, I, I got it from them and I was gonna send it back. I actually ended up purchasing it from them because I really liked it. And that was the, uh, the Norman sword. It's actually one of my favorite arming swords that I own. 
It's very different from a lot of them, and I actually really still enjoy it to this day. Haven't had a problem with it, although to be fair, I have not used it as extensively as I do some of my other weapons. All of that to lead into the conversation about the Herald series swords. Ultimately, my feelings on how the swords are constructed coming out of Dark Sword, purely on construction, not speaking of uh, heat treating and tempering of the blades themselves, is that they're actually really quite well fitted. They do a nice job. Their swords look nice. They, they are good, decent weapons. I would actually rank them uh, you know, dollar for dollar, I would rank them above windless in terms of quality, although they have had reported issues of loosening of hilt components, etc. I haven't experienced much outside of that single broken blade that I had in the Einar. Now, the problem is with the Herald series is that when you're talking about a forging process coming out of India, even though they are saying that it's under their supervision, Ultimately, these are probably going to be lower quality blades overall, but that may not be such a big deal. As long as they are heat treated properly, as long as they are tempered properly, uh, and as long as the swords are constructed properly, then these could potentially be some very, very good swords at an extremely reasonable price, given what I believe to be a much better a design and implementation than what you can get at a similar price point out of a company like Windless. Now, I have done my research. I have found other people doing reviews and speaking to the Herald series, and most people tend to walk away with it with a fairly mediocre sense of, yeah, it's probably worth the price, but there isn't anything about these that really make them stand out. In my opinion, the only thing that really actually makes the Herald series stand out is that they are actually nice, unique designs based on historical models, which can be difficult to find in lower-end swords. Uh, very often, they tend to go with much simpler design implementation and construction on the hilt to save money. And realistically, looking at the designs that we see in Dark Sword Armory, I don't believe that's what we see. I think we actually see extremely well-designed and implemented hilt uh, components, and I believe these swords are actually probably constructed in the best way possible. And that's what's so great about this, in my opinion. The one thing that will actually set this apart is unlike what you see in Windless or some other companies that end-to-end uh, -end build the sword in India or China, what you're really getting is an import of blades and then a construction at Dark Sword Armory, which I do believe their general construction is of a, of a higher quality. Now, of course, I say all this without having had a chance to really, well, test and use a Herald series sword. At this point, Dark Sword Armory is basically half and half with me. I still really like the design of the Einar sword, not so much as a historical model sword, but as a slightly fantasy Viking style sword. And despite the failure of the original one that I had, the new one seems to have held up fairly well. All my complaints still remain. And certainly, I am much more impressed by the Norman, and I'm much happier with it as a sword. So I'm really torn with Dark Sword Armory in general, but I do think that they offer a very valuable service to the community. But I do also feel like they need to step up their quality control, and even more so when you're looking at the Herald series. All that said, I might in the future pick up one of their Herald series swords because, well, they, they do look very nice. I would like to give them a shot. I hold no grudges against Dark Sword. I feel like as a customer, they've treated me very well. I would hope they would treat all their customers equally as well. And I hope that in the end, uh, they do continue to increase their quality, keep their prices low, and offer what I believe to be one of the few places you can go to get a truly mid-range sword at a good price that you can rely on for the most part. Of the Herald series swords, I would say that the Frederick Third sword and the two-handed sword, uh, that one doesn't really have a name associated with it, are probably my favorite designs that they have. Uh, I really think that those would probably be the ones that would give you the most bang for the buck in terms of overall design. Uh, third to that would probably be the Monarch, which is a 15th century sword. In the end, I, I do think these might be a good option for someone who's looking for that low to mid-range sword. 
And uh, hopefully it's exactly what they say, that it's a nose-nonsense, fully functional, battle-ready weapon at an affordable price. If they can actually truly meet that, if the quality control can be better, I can honestly say that if all those things are in place, they would be the preeminent entry-level to mid-range sword provider. But they really need to get to that point. So it's yet to be seen. This might be something that I will take a look at in the future. Uh, I'm certainly keeping an eye on the Herald series. I wish that it would actually expand in terms of options. I would like to see more variety. Uh, we seem to have been mostly stuck with the same six designs for the past couple of years. But we'll see what they do with it. We'll see if it goes anywhere. Perhaps if more people purchase these items, we can see more affordable weapons coming from Dark Sword. And, uh, and hopefully, again, they as a company will begin to meet our expectations as consumers.